what you had a plan to, to comment on. What I can tell you, and actually is the... Absolutely, Prime Miniature, Rishi Zuna. I thought you did have a plan. And this was an interaction between the chair of the Leveling Up Select Committee, Clive Betts, and the Prime Minister, where Clive Betts brought up the plight of a lot of local councils and money that they're receiving from central government. Um, since you were local government minister, Prime Minister, things have got worse for councils, haven't they, in terms of their finances. In the last eight years, uh, uh, sorry, six years, eight councils have effectively declared bankruptcy. In the previous 16 years, none had. So what is the fundamental problem? And before we say all those councils have made mistakes, some of them have, but as John Fuller, the uh, Conservative leader, of, um, said to the uh, Select Committee recently, uh, while the, the problems uh, have been specific to some councils, there's now a more general problem. And in the next year or two, about half the authorities will be in financial distress, potentially. Isn't that a fundamental crisis in local government finance? Well, I think that the first thing to say is councils are the backbone of their communities and they carry out tremendous work every day, delivering important services to the people they serve. And yeah, I, I got to experience that as local government minister, also being scrutinised by you, Clive, at, at the time. And uh, as we discussed then, recognised that they face challenges. Uh, but that's why, particularly over this parliament, significantly more funding has gone into local government and most recently £600 million boost in the local, uh, the recent, most recent local government finance settlement, which has meant that councils on average will have around 7.5% more spending power this forthcoming year than they did last year. Um, and that settlement, I think, was, was warmly welcomed by local government association, county councils network, and indeed the but district council that's network. That's in the context, isn't it, of a 30% cut in spending power in the last 14 years. And again, as uh, Councillor Fuller, a, a Conservative leader, said to us, uh, quoting the figures uh, that he's experiencing, when you've got adult social care spending going up by 90%, children with complex needs going up by 23%, and your uh, spending power is going up by 3 to 5%, it does not take a maths genius to work out that there's going to be a gap at some stage, and that gap, according to the LGA now, is around £4 billion, even after the extra money in the budget. The IFS says it's about £7 billion. That's a crisis, isn't it, where you're seeing social care going up, demands children's care going up in particular, send uh, special education needs going up, and other services being decimated in many parts of the country. No, I, I wouldn't characterise it that way. Of course there are challenges, particularly with inflation, which is why, actually, to, to Harriet's first question, the overriding economic priority of the government was to bring inflation down because that will help local councils with their finances too, as well as helping families up and down the country. And if you look at what's happened from central government to local government over this parliament since 2019, the grant in cash terms has more than doubled. Right, so that's, that's the change, that over, the, over this parliament, the amount of direct cash grant going from central to local government has doubled in cash terms from 2019 uh, to the... What, why is the Local Government Association then saying uh, that 20% of councils face the threat of bankruptcy in the next two years? Uh, uh, why are they saying that? Uh, it, uh, of course, every council is going to be different and face challenges, but I can just the tell 20 you that cent cent central though. government has doubled the grant since 2019, since I was Chief Secretary, uh, the grant going from central to local government has doubled over this parliament. Core spending power has gone up, uh, as I said, meaningfully over the last four or five years as well. Of course, there are always going to be challenges, but you know, where government can step in to help alleviate some of that pressure, it has done, particularly with social but care, which has forward, been the major area of concern. You've got these concerns rest right across local government by Conservative councils as well as Labour, right across. In the spending plans looking forward to the next parliament, the forecast is that the levelling up department, including local government, is not a protected department. So there's a forecast of no growth in spending whatsoever. Is it really sustainable that local councils could face no increase in support from government at all for four years and not make increased cuts to their services, which already are at rock bottom, or put council tax up by excessive amounts? What is going to give, Prime Minister? 
Well, I, I don't think we're going to write the next spending review here and now. But, um, but it's, so in, it's as, in the forecast. Again, there's an next spending review hasn't been done, so people, are, people can forecast all they want until the spending review is actually done. But there I thought you had a plan to, to comment on. What I can tell you, and actually as the chair opened with, overall public spending is forecast to grow in real terms over the next spending review period in cash terms by something like two and a half, two point seven uh, percent annually. And, uh, and uh, as I said, that hasn't been divvied up into various departments. That is what spending reviews are for. And necessarily, governments will prioritise at that moment. But overall public spending is forecast to rise, not just in cash terms, but in real terms over the next parliament. But, but, but so that's what the plans that are in the OBR's current forecast contain for day-to-day -day spending. But, but in those forecasts, Prime Minister, DLOC is not a protected department. Therefore, it is forecast to have no increase at all in its spending for the next parliament. That's the current forecast, isn't it? I, that, 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 I mean, I, all I can say is the spending review has not been done. The only number that exists is an overall spending envelope for what's called RDEL, the day-to-day -day government spending on public services. As I said, that's forecast to grow just over 2.5% in cash terms, 1% in real terms uh, over the forecast period. Now, how that is divvied up between different departments is the work of a spending review. Now, I, as we, I always come here and we have these debates. It's completely reasonable for everyone to say in their individual areas they would like more money to be spent on their particular interests, and I'm sure we'll hear, hear that from many colleagues, as the chair pointed out at the beginning. But I think it's just incumbent on colleagues to explain which department they think that increase should come at the expense of, or indeed what taxes should be raised to pay for it. I mean, look, government is in the business of always having to prioritise, but the, the framework that we've set out is one where public spending continues to grow in real terms over the next parliament. The next spending review will divvy that up amongst the competing priorities, and the track record over this parliament is for a substantial increase going into local government, particularly in the area of social care where the most pressure has been. Now oh, I loved the way a man who takes private jets, helicopters and has heated swimming pools and has no working class friends starts off with a statement of practically saying, I feel your pain, I really understand. Also, clearly he doesn't have or ever had a plan whatsoever, does he? You could just see it in his eyes, couldn't you? He just doesn't have a clue, does he? He just seemed to be saying the first thing that pops into his head to try and just kill as much time as possible. And I had a chuckle at the end where he's desperately staring at Sir Bernard Jenkins as if to say, please rescue me, I'm getting absolutely rinsed by someone who knows what he's talking about. But what do you guys think? Was our Prime Minister absolutely taken to the cleaners? Let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.